question concerning the late uh, vice chairman of the uh, PRC, Mr. Wesson. What was your relationship to him? And I understand that you also had a unique experience with Mr. Wesson. Can you please share that with us? Did that experience lead to your being arrested and, and incarcerated, or was it after you were arrested and, and incarcerated? Well, I um, I didn't have very much interaction with uh, with Sen, but the 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 two that I remembered vividly, I like to uh, mention. The first interaction, very active, visible interaction was, I was on the same program with West End at the university, at Cottonton University College. They speak, I was then president of the University of, 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 the, of Linsu. And we were at Cottonton at a program, I don't remember what the program was. But the speakers included Dr. Wema Fambule and Wesen. And Wesen delivered a speech. And that speech clearly written for him by a friend of ours, Michael Bowman, who is so rest in peace. I told him so, and he wrote it, and he said so. In that speech, Wesen was questioning was questioning the, the, the PRC's decision to break diplomatic relations with Israel when we with Libya. And, and also the accounting of the Russian, Russian embassy that was here. And also questioning uh, the Cuban, there was a Cuban embassy then, or, and things like that. Many of the things that the Tobas uh, program, Tobas and what was saying that he was not aligned and making new friends beyond the American friendship. So it was a very moving speech. And so three of us were in on that platform. And all of us spoke in endorsement of what was said has said. And that he emphasized the question of not alignment, like Liberia should be not aligned. We should not make our friends because somebody is telling us not to keep that, such and such a friend. We engaged him in discussion about some of the things for which he had been accused. You remember he was accused of being the one who had gone to, uh, to Sino and broke down the monuments of Congo people, I mean Congo people monuments and this, that and that. And in his explanation, just from his layman explanation, for him, he said he thought these were symbols of the old rule. And when they were growing up, and I'm sure many other people in this room believe that, when we were growing up and going to school in the Palmas and saw the monuments, we were told that all of those monuments where they killed somebody, put their head there, they did this, and all the strength of the American Liberians was under there. Now this is ignorance. Clearly, this is ignorance. But we're saying was still in that stupor or that ignorance when he became president, when he became vice chairman. Nothing changed. He believed that. And so if we say we remove these people from power, then their symbols should be removed. So he asked us, but something wrong with that? We move the people from power, we gotta move everything they they depending on. That they think they're meeting the depending on under there. So that's what he did. Again, that's the level of his development. I wouldn't hold him for it. I would hold those who didn't help him understand the relevance of national monuments and national uh, 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 symbols. So I forgave him. The next time we interacted was when I was thrown in jail by Mr. Doe. Again, Joe, Doe had thrown me in jail in June. 1981, and I said, among the charges against me was that I had suggested 
that development should be widespread, that we should ask the people in, River, in Grand Jireh, we were then part of Grand Jireh, River G was called lower, was part of Grand Jireh, was lower Grand Jireh. In a citizens meeting that had taken place at the Centennial Pavilion, he had asked, the meeting was going on, I hadn't said anything, and he said, but look, my man, you want to out book people. We're having this meeting, you say nothing. And I, I got up to say, Mr. Two things. One, you're talking about development, and you say that you pave the streets in Zwedro. But there is no functioning high school in the lower part of River G, I mean, of uh, Grand Jire. There is no proper clinic. Everything is in Zwedro. The same thing that people were doing when we were Eastern region. Everything was in Harper. So we were cut in the middle and our children couldn't go to school. So could you have a meeting to ask about what are the priorities that they should invest in? Mr. Doe, it didn't stop there. I said the second point is, the people are grumbling when you said that the money they are developing should be given to John Ramsey as treasurer. They said when he was superintendent or something, they are giving him some money, $25,000 for, for, to build a clinic or something in Lower Grand Jire. You know, in the Webble area, where I come from. And the fact that that wasn't built, they said this new money you gave him, give it to the same man. So people are concerned about who's going to manage the development fund. If, it's, if they don't trust the person, they won't pay. Mr. Doe, I saw the people whispering, Ramsey, the others were on the stage whispering in his ears. And he just jumped up. We didn't come here for confusion. You want to bring confusion here? We come here for development. You like it, you don't like it, Jack O'Lantern. In fact, the meeting finished. The man was called a meeting. And the meeting broke up. As we are leaving, I heard somebody saying, you're picking up. I didn't hear that, but they came and said, no, they said they should pick you up. But then I have all these rebel people who come from lower Grand Jire, now Rebel G, they came around me and carried me and were very happy that I made this statement. And Peter Johnson, may his soul rest in peace, Ambassador Peter Johnson, who was a very, very wise old man, very wise old man. He was a crown man. Again, it's not about ethnicity. But he went to do and say, you can't do that. The boy is right. You, you called him. You said it was an open meeting. And he, he said what he had to say. Why are you going to punish him? It was after that, the next thing was, graduate students having a program at a university. I had gone there to, to install the officer with, with Harry Nayu, Dr. Nayu. And because I gave my point of view, about holding people together, looking for the best and not on ethnicity. They went to Do, I'm told, Harry went to Do and told him, that community was there again on your back. He said, you form your government of social crime people. That's what I'm told. Now, that's what I'm told. He, he said, he probably didn't say that. But it was on that that Mr. Do then decided to take action. I was working with the um, LEC. Do when they, I was then uh, working again working with the LEC, and then there was the Constitution Commission. If you recall, the first group of people to issue a statement when the coup took place, and I want people to remember that. When the coup took place, there were dancers. People were always dancing, happy. The first time that a statement that laid out an agenda was presented to the PRC, it was done on the 7th of May by the Liberian National Students Union. I was then the president and other colleagues were there. Some of them are in town, Warite, um, from Cottington, Johnson, Mary Johnson, uh, George Blake here, all of these people from the university were all there. That's the locally. Jim Fromoyan, the whole batch of us. 20,000 students turned out at the executive mansion grounds and presented to do the PRC that statement. This 
first time they used the statement because we have said that you cannot repeat the same things for which you have overthrown the people. You have to account. You have to tell us when you return into the barracks. You need to organize a constitution commission so that there will be changes in the constitution to reflect the new transformation. Those were the things in our statement. And so when he appointed the constitution commission, I was appointed on the commission as the youngest uh, person, as the youth representative, more or less. On this day, Mr. Doe wrote to Harry Nguyen, who was the managing director, to fire me from LEC, and they wrote me to remove me from the Constitution Commission. And then, they started, an, I was then going to the law school. They started an announcement as I was going to class. No, we went to law school class, but I wasn't feeling too good, so we left the class. A friend of mine took me in her car, driving me, and said, look, let's stop to uh, Dunn's place. And in the car, the announcement began that I was an anti-revolutionary, that no one, I was banned from visiting people, from meeting with anybody, from anyone visiting me. A South African banning law was announced by the PRC. I guess the, my friends tell me I'm the only person who has suffered that in Liberia history. But that's what happened under the, uh, the, the, the door regime. It was that prison that I was taken to, to um, in fact, I wasn't taken to prison immediately. The observer came out the next day with all the stories and, and, and things and letters to the editor questioning the authority if the government would attack me, who else they wouldn't attack because these are the young people who were supposed to be the foot soldiers of this revolution. We're now questioning the revolutionary credentials of the PRC. It was, then he was going out of the country. Was it Zimbabwe or Kenya to an OU event? 1981. Sando Moore was going with him as the editor, as the photographer. They arrested him. They arrested Kenneth Best, his wife, the, the, even the printer, the guy who was running the typewriters and stuff. Everybody was picked up. But before they picked them up, they had picked me up. And that was the story. I was living PHP with Dustin. Dustin and I rented a house. He stayed upstairs. I lived downstairs. And they picked me up. And some of the guys who were involved, the entire PRC members came to my house. Senate uh, Chief of Staff Duba was there. Kwiwoma, the whole batch of them, every single one of them, except Zuo, uh, Sumo, Wesen, everybody else. They picked me up that night, put me in the back of a, of a uh, Chevrolet, and began to drive along the, PH, the, the, the beach, the, the uh, BTC beach. And as we're driving along the beach, as we're driving along the beach, this guy had a pistol in my ear and said, you're finished tonight. We're taking you and we'll finish you. The chief said, we should finish you. You got big mouth. And as we went along, then I heard from the handset, as you were, bring the prisoner over to be this, to, to post that in. When we got there, we met Kwebomba. And he said to the jailer, the man in charge, must have been called Noah or something, I don't remember. He said, look, the chief changed his mind. He said, you should jail this man. This is the chief's prisoner. He said, I'm going to kill him. This is what sent, I mean, we won't be saying this to I, The man didn't say we should kill him. You just put him in interview. You show him small, but don't kill him. Right there, I was stripped naked, butt naked, carried to the post packet in this room called interview, which has only a single diamond hole. It's a tiny little room and threw me in there. 
Some of the people who had been who had been arrested after the coup d'etat were still in there. One of the guys, Charles De Shield, who was a friend of mine, he used to be head of the NSA, uh, Mark De Shield's son, came to that little window and told me, "My friend, we've been expecting you ever since. They've been talking that you will be brought here." Now I don't know who was helping them to make that decision. But I was then threw in there and Doe then left the country. Kenneth Beth Beth and his whole family were now in central prison. Their newspaper offices blacked. And it was there that one day, all this time buck naked. This day we got a message that I was needed to the Capitol building to be that the vice chairman, as they call them, they used to call him co-chairman, were saying wanted to see me and the whole council. No, no, that he wanted to see me. But I didn't have any clothes. All my clothes were gone. So, Mrs. Ricks, I remember her name is Ricks, the lady who the lady who they arrested because they say she was holding Angie. A.B. Angie Ricks say she was holding A.B. Torben. She was in detention. She had a little room. She had little freedom. And some of the people who they had killed or some who were in detention who had gone free, she had washed their clothes that they had. She had pressed them and they were all stacked of clothes in her little cell. So when they were looking for clothes for me to wear, go to the DRC, she just said, oh, but I got something yet. And she brought this pants, which I found later, and she said, this was Charles Miners. Charles Miner was then the, the, our ambassador in Washington, in Washington, was then the, from LPRC, LPMC, when they had put him in. So they said, he said, no, you can take this and wear it. Then they gave me somebody else's shirt. So I had to, because he was the heat of big man. So I had to tie that stuff, and that's how I had something. Don't ask me what else was under. It was just a pan with our shoes, and we're taken to the, the capital building. Now you ask me how that touched me. When we met with the entire PRC in that June, in that meeting, I saw Wesen presiding. And he said to everyone who was in the room to say what they knew about me, what I had done wrong that they have heard about. One speaker after the other said, Oh, that's my first time seeing this man. Oh, the man talk for us. When the student, when they talk, that we, we the soldier people, that we the one they used to talk good about. We the country people. So they may, yeah, we know where they put the man inside. And so Wesson said, that's why I wanted us, so we can know, so when the chief comes, we can all go to beg the chief to free this man. Mary Anthony Brown Sherman was present. Dr. Sawyer and Duke Mason, Professor Duke Twangler Mason, they were present. We went all through this and I said to them, that you know, this looked like a systematic effort to attack and remove your support base so that you can slip. Because if you want transformation, you have to have allies. Now, if you are attacking everybody else, I don't know who your allies are. Of course, you know, after all of this, they all agree, including, I must say, including Penu, who was perceived as the baddest guy in town. He too was there and said, oh, I thought this man was some kind of big man. If I hear my second wrestle, because you know, in the villages, to test each other, you gotta wrestle. And the one in the, the wrestlers, and that's part of the thing, you test each other. So that's all I could think. His mentality is in that, was at that level. So we could wrestle and he would knock me down. That's what he said. He said, no, 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 when the chief comes, we all will go. Chief, don't worry, we all will talk so they can free him. And I left. They took me back to Postaki. Midnight, I heard the doors banging. Get out, 
out, get out, get out. I say, oh my God, I'm finished today. They put me in the car and carry me all over this town. Went to Broville, this place, that place. And finally, around 2 a.m., I was landed in in the uh, NSA, in one special room at the NSA. I was told that Wesen has had ordered that I be removed from the post arcade because shortly after that meeting, someone and people said that it was Nayu, who had gone and called Do wherever he was and say you sit there, Mr. Wesen want to have a good name on your back. And therefore, you better be careful. Take some kind of action. I'm told Wesen a Do then gave some order to say, but let a man get missing. The idea was that I should get missing from Tase. I'm escaped. I tried to escape from the post and I got killed. That's again, Do didn't tell me it's all what others said. And that's why Wesen took the action to remove me from this cell. So that was the last interaction I had with Wesen. This is June. The next month is July. And the next month is August. Come August, Wesen is caught at EAW Junction coming from football field, coming from a game in Basel for trying to overthrow the government. I'm told that when the, the evening that they killed him or the day that period was right, just before he was killed from the, from the post arcade, among the things he said was that he was being killed because he ventured to save my life and the life of some others. And it wasn't only was saying then that was being took. That's why I'm saying that it was a systematic thing. That it was the same time that Dr. Tupanati put there was named to be part of those who tried to overthrow the government. And he was due to come into the country. He was supposed to be picked up and probably killed. And every step of the way, people who were seen as part of the popular forces were being attacked, singled out, and follow um, Marcus Matthews or follow uh, uh, Dr. Fambule and the rest of the other people, one by one, and then Sawyer and the university, and then everyone ultimately left the country. If you ask me then, what I thought about was then, I had seen him in action. I know that he believed in something. He might have been ill-informed, but he believed it. Had we given him opportunity, he probably would have done differently. He had a kind of revolutionary mind but didn't have enough information to pursue that course. And so he became an obstacle. I am told and I know, I heard, shortly after the incident where they had gone to Torba's house and collected the loot that some people believe was money, Wesen protested. And I heard it from his people that same week that Wesen and Do are in a quarrel. His was that you get anything, let us have it together. I did not get the impression that he wanted it for himself. He had a point of difference with his colleagues about graft. He always questioned. He met with people whenever they came to his offices. It was always an open meeting. He questioned relationships with Firestone and Lamco during the negotiations and things that were being given to them. That's what I know. 